guys it's lucid from lucid dreams and today I have a halo fan art tutorial for you guys that we're gonna start um it's a pretty pretty decent journey um, he has a lot of pieces a lot of details um, but we'll definitely get there um, what we're gonna be doing today is Corey Hubble's um, a55 s1000 I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly and I'll just go over into Maya and show you guys basically what we'll be creating so here's basically the um, the clean version, the, the base clean version for the character um, that we'll be creating. What we'll do is we'll start the character in ZBrush, uh, concept him out, get him back in Maya to retopologize re him and do his UVs to bring him back in ZBrush and um, get the high res and bring the high res back over to the low res in Maya. That way, you know, we can bring him into a game engine or, you know, we can just have pretty low renders. Um, I like to keep my topology pretty low, um, as low as I guess possible for uh, the characters that I do because I'm not running off a, a really crazy machine. I'm just using a 2012 uh, MacBook Pro. So, yeah, so we're going to kind of break this character down into pieces and just go like that. So without further ado, we will start the tutorial. All right, guys, so to start this character, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a base mesh. Then we're going to bring in his reference images um, in the ZBrush and kind of like use them as a, a guideline um, and then kind of just sculpt over them. It's really good to have reference like this. Um, I want to thank Corey Hubble for, you know, these amazing sketches um, that he created because without these sketches, it wouldn't the process wouldn't be so easy. Um, I'm usually used to making characters just from this uh, three-quarter view alone, but when you have, you know, a nice three-quarter and a front side um, and a back, you know, the ortho is going on, it just makes everything a lot smoother, a lot more accurate. That way I can um, give the, the character that, you know, the designer really wants. I can really bring his character, his actual vision to life. So what I usually do is I keep, uh, I usually work with two monitors but um you won't you guys won't be able to see this this monitor so i keep these up for reference um basically the whole time i'm sculpting as well as having the reference images in zbrush that way you know i can um it kind of gets sometimes you can't really see it like completely clear in zbrush so it's a lot it's a lot better to just have these on the side and just to kind of understand the shapes better it just helps a lot like reference goes a long way i'm sure you guys know so yeah when you hear me refer to the basically the hidden references um that's these are what i'm what i'm referring to so yeah all right guys so basically what i'm doing now is bringing in my reference images um i like to use the draw tab and the floor function to just map the um the images to the front the back and the sides that's basically what i'm doing just lining them up trying to get a you know a decent um I guess just a decent size for the images to kind of match my uh, base mesh. Um, I use I made this base mesh um, a while back. You guys can use whatever base mesh you want to or create your own for this project. It's really not uh, much of a big deal. You don't need much anatomy here. Um, as long as you have a basic idea, you know, of anatomy, then we'll be fine because most of his pieces is mechanical anyway. So that's just we're just going through this process right now, just setting up the reference. Because you know it's gonna be play a, a major role to make sure we get all the key shapes and everything. You know we're not gonna go exactly off the reference. We're gonna try um, as much as we can. But yeah. So at this point, I just see well dynamesh my base mesh, and I'm just kind of getting ready to start the pieces. Basically, start the head. That's what we're gonna start at. So. Um, well, I guess I forgot that I needed to bring in the rest of my um, reference images. So, yeah, when it comes to reference, you can't really get enough. So you want to definitely make sure you get those, you know, in there. Make sure they're right. Yeah, because once you get those references in there, it just makes things a lot more easy, a lot more smoother. Um, makes you uh, understand everything a lot more, too. Um, so, yeah. And also just having those uh, hidden references you know those extra images to the side as well so you can just keep looking back and forth so yeah now we you know still lining up that back image you know you want to make sure that they are closely aligned as possible 
Otherwise, it's going to get really messy when you're, you know, when you're trying to line things up and uh, match up certain shapes. Now we jump to the side image. The side image is a, um, a little bit, I feel like it was a little, a little smaller, need to be a little bit larger, but, um, you know, we'll just compensate for everything in the scope. So now we're just about getting ready to go ahead and start the, the head. So what I usually do is I like to create another piece um, and just kind of go from there. Block out the basic shape of uh, the forms that I'm looking for. Um, and also, you know, try to stay true to the concept and try to keep most of those main forms in their, um, in their respective places. So right here, what I like to do is I like to use the damn standard brush. Yeah, the damn standard brush. Um, I like to use that brush to kind of just sketch out like some forms. And then as you can see, we can jump back from the side view and the front view to kind of just see, you know, see what we're sketching out. Yeah, these reference images really help a lot to just make everything a lot more faster, a lot easier. Um, you can understand the shapes a lot better rather than just sculpting from you know one single three-quarter view so yeah what I usually do is like to bring out certain edges and then just go right back over that same edge and kinda just make an indention to kinda give the illusion of this uh, this mech feel on the scope so right now just kinda jumping around the head basing out the base base pieces you know well the main pieces and just going from there you know making sure that everything is still lined up for the most part with the reference images and just go from there you know, I like to use the clay build up tool as well it's just you know, when I'm sculpting I don't really use too many tools I just kind of just um, my main tools are like the clay build up, the damn standard, the standard, um, and then I have a few like um, cloth brushes that I like to use. And to be honest, for the most part, that's about it. I'm really, <laughs> not really a fancy modeler or sculptor, you would say. Um, but in the future, I definitely will be showing um, some new techniques that I've been studying lately. So just be on the lookout for those. As you can see, we can really use that damn standard tool to really just to just get the idea of all of the shapes we need, and it kind of just it just really just makes those forms pop the way we want to, and give that mech feel as well. Kind of take that um, take that mushy feel off the mesh. So yeah, and this part um, is really important. You want to make sure. Um, when you're cleaning up, you know, when you're following the reference images, you want to make sure that you have the certain, the correct pieces um, following the reference images. As you can see, I'm making sure that the eyes, uh, well, his eye mask, everything is is showing truly and accurately. Alright guys, so at this point, I had jumped around the model a little bit, made some of the um, other major forms, and then went back to the head. So, continuing with the head. Um, which I just started the back, and we're just basically doing the same process using that clay build up tool and um, damn standard to just kind of sketch out some of these forms. I like to call it Z sketching, still gives me the um, feel of like drawing, but you know, of course, on the 3D mesh. And uh, yeah, really, it for me, it really brings out the concept of you know, bringing a 2D image to life. So that's kind of why I like this method uh, so much. And yeah, so right now I'm just figuring out these shapes, trying to figure out um, what overlaps what, um, you know, uh, making sure I got my points on. Because that's, that's, that's really what I started to realize matters when you're doing um, characters like this, like Max. You want to make sure that you get those, those points. You know those ninety degree angles, and that's that's really what it's all about. Um, I kind of not to try to go too far into it. I try to keep my thinking primitive for when I'm sculpting. That way, when I take it into Maya, I'll have a good idea of how I want to retopologize it.
So, yeah, right now, as I said, just kind of etching out that circular shape, making sure that, um, making sure that I am sculpting the pieces as they they seem to be in the reference. Um, and I kind of just, like I said, I kind of etch everything out. That way, it gives me an idea that, oh, okay, hell, this this is broken apart. Um, this is overlapping this. Um, you know, just the that's kind of how I like to think of it when I'm sculpting these uh, type of uh, characters. So yeah, as you see here, I'm bringing out, I'm trying to get this, this, I guess this extra little bit of detail to, so I can know, I have a better reference from when I was re apologizing in Maya. I'm just bringing that out with a um, damn standard, you know, and going right back over it to pop the under edge in to give it like this, I guess this kind of bevel or this extrusion type feel. So, <clears throat> and that's just why I like the damn standard because it's so reminiscent to Maya's like uh, edge loops and everything. So, I don't know, my brain kind of thinks a little weird. But yeah, so at this point I'm just just touching up some of these pieces in the back. Um, getting those smaller detailed pieces that um, I have off to the, the hidden reference. Making sure that I can at least get, because basically what I do is I make sure that I sculpt in the main placeholders. And then I go back in my, uh, and my and apologize it and you know we'll do all the, the extra edits and Make sure we get the extra details that you know we need or we want um, in this piece, because uh, doing it in the ZBrush, as I said, it it's a lot faster. But it if you don't have a super super strong computer, then it's kind of gonna get a little annoying because your computer might run slow and mine runs slow. Once I get to those uh, higher level, like you know, a couple million polys, so yeah. At this point, I'm realizing that you know this uh, shape is actually on top. Of the original shape that was sculpted so I'm kind of just using the you know the clay build up just to kind of build it up a bit just so I can you know give my eye uh, a guideline a mark saying hey you know this is actually popping out a bit you know and when we go back in Maya I can depend you know when I read to apologize it I can make it uh, make the length or the width as far as I want to from the original mask or the back of the, um, the mask the back of the helmet so, like I said, that's just why I like the damn standard because you can always kind of cut into something or, you know, um, I guess pull out of it. So, like you're never really confined to any type of shape, which is great. So, yeah. You know, just making sure... Like I said, um, big thing you want to make sure is that you got all your corners and um, all of those shapes the way you want them to. That way, when you go, like I said, when you go back in Maya, because it's all basically all setting up for the retopology. Because you want this character to actually, you know, move around and you know be running around or do whatever you needed to do. So you want to make sure you at least have a good base in a ZBrush. You know, it doesn't have to be too detailed, but you definitely want to, like I say, you want to get those, those defined shapes and those defined forms. You know, those edges and bevels, you want to make sure that they're there. And yeah, that's basically most of the process. Just yeah, I'm not. I don't really do much of um, anything fancy. I guess. I guess I'm a. Yeah, I guess I'm a basic, uh, plain sculptor, if you will. Um, I just kind of sculpt until it's there, and then re apologize. And yeah, my method is a little, <laughs> I guess, interesting. But at this point. Uh, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get that little seems like it's a uh, it's kind of cut off there so I was trying to emphasize that that aspect of the um, of the mesh 
and then I just decided to outline. I realized that when you outline things, like when you're sculpting the ZBrush, kind of when you outline them first and then go about, you know, maybe extruding in or, um, you know, sculpting in or whatever, it just makes, like, it makes things pop a lot more. I realized that um, a lot of times, you know, even following this technique, you can you can follow the um, the reference image like spot on, but sometimes your your details won't show because they're not necessarily you didn't necessarily create them to pop. Um, if that makes any sense, still massaging this shape here, going in and giving it a little more of an indention, and then um, I'm going in and digging that hole in. I just felt like that that made a little more sense to me that that's what I felt like I was seeing from the concept so yeah that like that's another thing I try to usually just you know sculpt based off what I see off the concept after I have the original um, the original guideline set and here is where my computer start freezing a lot on me um, as I started to polish off a little bit of um, some of those edges and get a little more detailed clean finish um, my computer just started lagging on me skipping on me a bit so um, bear with it it won't be for too long um, yeah I'm just going back in sometimes you'll see me switch black back and forth from um, this white to black mode or well, basically changing the mesh black so I can see more of um, the reference and I kind of just move the, the mesh around until I get to where the reference point is. Here I'm kind of going in making the ear. Um, just bringing out that, basically that extra extrusion. And going to make sure it matches up in the back as well and in the front. Um, and I'm kind of pulling out, um, looking at it from the three-quarter view. Trying to get that, uh, it's kind of like a... I don't know how would you say like a, it's really like a slanted creased edge it's kind of weird to explain just trying to get that edge and as I said my computer's really yeah lagging tough on me let um, just stop it, um, in a second here um, right after I just about get this piece done but yeah continuing we'll just continue on this piece and I just kind of sculpt out the guidelines for what I feel like is going on. I feel like it's a an indention, and then there's something, you know, in there, connecting. So, just sculpting that out. Um, let's see another thing I will talk about real quickly here. Um, yeah, when you're doing these, don't I would say just you know be really rough. Um, as rough as you could be especially you know when blocking it out because it, it, it's a kind of you that this is where you get the most fun out of it and here my computer start you know finally it finally woke back up when we got back to it but yeah that's where you get the most fun out of it just kind of being rough and just like I said I like I like to sketch I like to call it sketching it just feels nice like just the just the strokes I don't know <laughs> it's kind of weird but um, going back here, back to it, quick saving, getting ready to kind of go to um, other pieces, pieces in the front, getting ready to start tackling those, like this uh, piece that looks like it's a little bit connected to, um, I guess, his earpiece, um, kind of making a, a base shape for that, just trying to make sure right now what I'm seeing is the line that's going through um, the line that's going through that earpiece um, it right now it kinda feels like it was a different piece but later on I'll go back and fix that later and like I said this is why this is why it's good to kinda just base it out in ZBrush and then go back in Maya and you know you can make all of your edits like that yeah, also I was trying to figure out the forms. Um, took me a little minute to understand this shape because for some reason I just couldn't see it. 
Um, yeah, I couldn't see it at all. So I was trying to trying to understand what was going on there. Jumping back and forth from the front and the side, looking at it from a three quarter. Also, um, yeah, when you're starting to do this method, sometimes you know you'll do it from one one view only, and going back to you know the front view, it might be sticking too far out. So you might have to pull it in. When you pull it in, that you know deforms everything. So it, it's kind of going back and forth. <coughs> And just you know, finessing the shape basically. <laughs> Got half an inch, bro. What you mean? But um, and now you see me just doing the um, getting the jaw piece going. So we jump into the front here a little bit, and uh, just kind of outlining this shape that's that I know is going to like basically protrude out a little more and extrude out. Getting ready to set this um, set this big hole he has here in the middle of his jaw. Getting ready to set that up, so we can put that that little piece in. And so yeah, I made the front of it and realized okay, that's where the piece is supposed to be. So just completely destroyed all of that. and yeah here <laughs> there's some of my unorthodox methods um like I, as i said sometimes like you can't really see um as well as you would like to uh the reference and everything that's going on so i kind of moved it up real quick just to see what was going on and you know of course bring it right back so i can get a better idea of the shape and um how all of its forms are created or how they seem to look to me <laughs> how, how I interpret them so at this point kind of starting that little small little indentation that you see um, using his front view or his three quarter view that's right it's um it's like inside the the hole where he puts I guess that little gas mask part. And then here just you know detailing up the um the jaw structure a bit or the jaw piece if you will. Seems like it's kinda like connecting over it, so I'm just trying to give it that feel, make it seem like a separate piece, make it seem like it's, it's put it put it fairly close to the ear piece to to get that connecting type of feel, and then I can, like I said, go back and detail it later or edit the placement later if I if I need to. And here's that you know, black and white switch again. You see, you'll you'll see me do that pretty often. It kind of it kind of gives you, you know, it's an ease on the eyes as well. I like to uh, I feel like switching like that, doing things like that while you're sculpting keeps your eye fresh. Uh, yeah, I start to realize that he kind of his his jawline like comes up a lot actually. A lot more than it needed to be because yeah I was trying to get this he has this tight feel around his mouth so I was trying to kind of get that feeling because I wasn't feeling that originally um <laughs> so yeah maybe if I add some small details over there maybe nope never mind <laughs> but I'm um, starting to look like I said I always kind of go back and look at the the entire mesh um, or the mesh from afar that way I can see what's going on. I mean, and, and a lot of this process now is just me kind of just, you'll, you'll see my process of how I, <laughs> I guess, fight myself to figure out these um, these shapes. I wouldn't say fight myself, but basically just 
you know, go through it in my head. I'm just um, studying the shapes um, with my hidden references and then using the actual guides as well as just kind of using my eye to just make some of these shapes. So as you can see now, I can jump back to the reference, but before then I was just going based off of my uh, three-quarter view. I like to use the three-quarter view of the hidden reference. Um, I like to use that a lot because it gives me most of my information. You know? So here I'm just saving, waiting for the auto save, waiting for the quick save to finish. All right, guys, now we're kind of just going to work on the front. And, you know, I'm going to try to get a lot of these main shapes in the front going. So just starting off, I'm playing around with his mask, you know, bringing it out a little bit more, making sure it matches up a little bit more. There we go, just getting those shapes from that, um, that one edge that I see. Oh, matching up, just trying to match it to the reference. Right now, I'm looking at the three-quarter view, trying to match that as well. Um, this is bothering me a bit, so I decided to go ahead and pop this uh, this little connector piece in. And just, you know, moving it around so I get the basic shape that I want for the connector piece. And then I just dynamesh it um, after I after I set it up based off the reference. Dynamesh it, and then I kind of just scoped on it just to give a general idea of a connector. Of a, I couldn't really see much um, in the original um, ortho views for for this piece, so I just used a three quarter view. I just kind of made the connector piece based off that. Um, I went ahead and mirrored it over. That way we can go ahead and have our mirror function going and started sculpting on it. And it's basically made a, a general square shape and then I kind of just pinched the, the middles in and then brought you know brought the the the, the inner part out to kind of give it this connected feel. So yeah and that's just usually how I think about all of my shapes. Like I look at them, what's the main basic shape first? And then I kind of look at the details after that. Because if you can get the main shape, then the details will come later. Like, it'll be a lot more easier. So, right now, I'm just, yeah, a quick save. You know, I love the ZBrush quick save function, it saves me a lot. Sometimes. I kind of, what kind of hurts me as well. Well, I kind of hurt myself with it, but because I just use it so much, but it's just so quick. I, it's just like it's so quick. I haven't even made an interface. Like I haven't made my own custom interface for it because I just come in here and just ooh, pop out, pop out stuff real quick and keep going. <laughs> I need to go ahead and get my interface back um, how it used to be. But um, yeah, I'll do that one of these days. But right now. So I started to make that eyepiece, um, yeah, basically cut. Um, I like to use the front piece. I like to use the front image, I mean, um, and kind of just start it off and then just literally just pull it back because I know for the most part the front's going to look um, pretty accurate. Um, actually, this most of this um, these, these reference images are, like, really accurate. It was just a couple pieces that were off. But like I said, uh, shout outs to Corey Hubble again for that. Because, um, yeah, that's amazing. And you can find these images just on YouTube. I mean, not YouTube, but on uh, Google. Anywhere. I just kind of Google like Halo. Um, Halo, I guess, reference sheets or Halo um, turnarounds. And this was like one of the first ones that came up. But yeah. And so right now I'm kind of trying to figure out what's going on with his mouth. Going on with that mouth shape. Um, I'm kind of looking at the three-quarter view right now and kind of trying to figure out everything that I see in there because it's a lot of shapes going on in there. So, and I know I got the nose part, which is the main shape going. So, um, I probably got scared of that and was like, oh, no, nah, wait, I think I'm going to just play around with the eye a little bit more here. So, here we're going to just kind of just 
at this point I'm trying to get that more of a I guess of a mechanical feel around his his um his goggles yeah his eye goggles and just to make sure I got all of those as I said those angles the correct angles that I see in the reference image and just yes yeah, so yeah, as you can see going back trying to tighten up those uh, basically those angles that's really what I look for when I'm doing these pieces or uh, it's, it's mainly the angles because if you can get those going then everything else is kind of just gonna fall right into place let me get back to it oh and here I'm changing my field mode Um, because I felt like I couldn't see enough, but it really didn't do too much for me. So I was like, okay, well, I guess I'm just going to have to deal with it. Um, kept going, kept sculpting on the mesh. Um, got to come a little bit of H polish going there to kind of polish off the, um, the eyes. Get a nice hard surface feel. Same with the goggles. Gotta give me that nice hard surface feel. And yeah, I keep playing around with the eyes because well, they really look weird to me. I just want to make sure. <laughs> well, at this point, they look weird. I just want to make sure they get, um, that I got the the eyes like as close because the eyes are pretty important on any character. Like if they're not um, true to the design, or you know, if you're making a human or whatever, then the whole the whole character is going to feel kind of off. So. Definitely want to make sure you get that correct. I'm just going in and adding some more details, some more of these extrusions and indentions that are shown in the, um, the reference image. Cleaning up now the actual um, the goggle pieces and kind of getting some of that detail that you see right above his um, eye, and right before the goggle goggle starts to get this like. This octagon type shape, if you will, or however many side one, two, three, four, into the line. So at this point, I started out to rough out the nose a bit. Um, he has a fairly basic. He's kind of remind me of an actual nose. Yeah, once you um, get most of his face done, it's actually um, really similar to an actual like the actual jaw structure or the well, not the jaw structure but the bone structure of uh, actual face I was thinking about the jaw but um, so kinda just getting that little piece there as I said basically roughing out uh, all of all of the placeholders all of the shapes that I see all of the main shapes the big shapes getting them in there so I can at least get an idea of where they are and how they fit Cause that's another big uh, factor, you know how these pieces are gonna fit. Right here, just kind of emphasizing that that long rectangle shape, and then going in and giving the. What I like to do is I like to basically at this part, what I was doing was looking at the three quarter view, and just literally just going off of what I see, and see like I said, this is kind of like a drawing technique that. Um, I use, um, I kind of just, I don't even look at what kind of the mesh, I just kind of look at the reference images and go there and build out the basic line structure, the basic line work for the, um, the mesh. And then I go back and as you can see, I'm, um, sculpting in everywhere that needs to be sculpted in, dynamesh and as needed to basically kind of make these holes to make it seem like, oh, okay. Um, each piece is his individual piece, but you know, it's all sculpted together. Um, I don't know why I do that. I kind of, uh, that's just kind of how I was taught um, when I was studying um, 3D. So, and at this point, we still <laughs> we go back to those eyes. You see me go, you know, keep going back to those to make sure they're right. Cause for some reason I felt like that's where that's what was making causing me not to see it or that's what was stopping me from seeing it so 
and we'll just you know finally get our edge detail going on our um on our goggles. And as you can see, if you just kind of emphasize these shapes, like yeah, you can kind of see it's drawn on. But when you go back, it's, it's all of it is for the purpose to go back and clean it, and the you know get good shapes out of it. Whether you're going to clean it in Maya or ZBrush, because um, I also probably could have cleaned this in ZBrush and just used the Z remesher and kind of just kept going over it and kept remeshing it until you know it was a nice shape. But <clears throat> oh, and that's probably something that I'll practice or show in the next tutorial on the next character. We're here going back to the jaw. Um, now you know, show a little, show a little more love to his chin and his jaw. Go ahead and see. As you can see, I kept the mesh black. I couldn't see anything. Couldn't see what I was doing. I just literally got the basic silhouette. Yeah. Um. Because once you get the silhouette, you can kind of, you at least the way um, my brain works, I kind of just put everything together after that. I'm like, okay, well, I know this it should be like a straight line going across. So I kind of just usually do that and then build that way. That's what you see me doing here. I kind of recognize that, okay, well, it's it's this, it, it's this, um, this rectangular shape that's kind of just pulled out. To make his mouth, and you just go from there. Yeah, the mouth, the 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 face. Well, I wanted to go ahead and start the face first because I felt like it was one of the um, the most difficult pieces. And if you can get his face, if you can go ahead and get his face done, then yeah, everything else would be kind of a breeze. His leg might get you, but um, it shouldn't. <laughs> it shouldn't once you complete his face. Um, but yeah. So, just going in here, and it's just really just a lot of massaging and analyzing, really. And a lot of people, what they'll do is um, they'll they'll probably just make different shapes. Um, I would definitely, you know, advise that if it's a lot more helpful for you. But sometimes, sometimes sculpting, like I, I tried that, I actually did this uh this piece a couple of times before um, I got to here I mean I got to this uh, result I got to here but yeah so I did the piece a couple of times and then this just worked better for me um, just kinda just going in and being messy and just sculpting everywhere and bringing things out so but sometimes this me method doesn't necessarily work for everything or all mech pieces Sometimes I like to use multiple pieces and just kind of pop them in like that. But yeah, at this point, I'm trying to get those indentions going where uh, the connector pieces would be. Um, I'm still playing with the eyes. I was like, okay, what is this going to look like? I don't know. I don't know if I like it, whatever. We'll keep it. I'm looking at the character again, like, mm, no, some. <clears throat> so yes, I see. Still feeling like his eyes were off a bit, so going back to him, clean him up, make him a little bigger, and fit the reference a lot, a lot more. And also, a lot of times, what it may be is sometimes the mushy. Is the, you have to be able to see the outcome. You have to be able to see the the final version just from the mushy mesh, like, um, uh, because that may be what I'm seeing here. Um, but also it may be just that the mesh isn't completely lined up, or also completely finished, because a lot of times. That's yeah, that's a big part. You know, your art isn't gonna start to look good until it's about. 90% done, maybe 87 or something like that, if you're like a super great artist, but, um, so yeah, it's just a lot of massaging, going back and forth, and getting all those shapes, and now I'm starting to get this, um, this piece that's right over his jaw, um, it was a scary looking piece, to kind of sculpt out at first, 
but then I got the idea of it. I don't like it reminds me of yeah your mouth so. Also going up here, giving me a little bit more guidelines. That's why it's also good to jump around the mesh because sometimes what you're seeing in your mesh when you might not think it's, you know, it's looking good is that it's not finished. You know, it's, um, a lot of times those small details or those small areas that, you know, the area like the head, that's the well, the, the head that's um, under the connector part between the back of the head and the front of the head, that area, please. Um, you know, just having that area finished may make the the biggest the biggest difference in your piece because there's certain things that you might see at your peripherals or you might notice that you're seeing that's actually making the sculpt or the piece as a whole. Okay, so at this point, um, still, um, I'm still just finessing all of these shapes, you know, massaging these shapes. To basically get what uh, to get the general idea of of the mesh, and then like I said, I'm gonna just go back into um, Maya, just duplicating this little connector pieces, and go ahead and um, putting it in these holes that's uh, right there under his nose or um, on his nose, um, and also um, like I said, these pieces will be cleaned in Maya, so you don't necessarily always have to like sculpt out each individual piece you don't always have to completely finish the sculpt it's just to get a it's just kind of a a base mesh if you will to get a idea of basically how the pieces are forming you know which directions they're going and uh, so forth and so on so at this point um, I'm pretty close to about being finished with this I guess with this concept scope and then I'll do for the most part the rest will be done in um, Maya with retopology and then the finalizing the retopologized version in ZBrush which will be in the video tomorrow so in the next updated video tomorrow so just stay tuned for that um yeah this guy he's got a couple videos so I'll be constantly up, up uploading on uh, videos like every day um for 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 a good little minute actually so just you know stay tuned every day there'll be you know more content new content i'm at this point i'm just still jumping around the model um i'm kind of seeing all of the main shapes that i think that i'm going to need for when i go back in maya and i'm kind of making decisions here because um, in the three-quarter view, it was a little different. The top of his head is a little different from the actual um, ortho views. Um, so I'm just kind of making a decision to just go with the regular dent that's in the um, that's in the three-quarter view rather than um, I, I can't really tell what that is going through the middle of his head. So I'm not really um, particularly sure what's going on up there. So I'm just gonna kind of leave it alone and let it be. Let it be flat. And yeah, sometimes you just gotta, you know, cut your losses. Cause as I said, you know, we're gonna try to go for an exact match, but you know, um, to get that, it would take you know an extremely long time, and for you know tutorial purposes and then just work purposes, we're just gonna go ahead and continue. So at this point, I was dynamash and everything, saving out the project. Um, and you know, just kind of looking at the scope, getting ready to, I guess, do those little, um, those little vent pieces that's that's right there underneath his jaw structure.
I'm just going in and cleaning up that jaw a little bit before we get all of that all going. Before we get those extra pieces inside. So I'm gonna leave this jaw going. I'm gonna make sure that the jaws are aligned properly. I'm gonna make sure you know it's at least for the most part a setup. So the piece can go ahead and so we won't be interfering with any other objects. So cleaning up that top a bit more. We got a better finish, a nice crisp edge going. <laughs> going back and forth, back and forth. To try to see the shape of the chin a little bit more before I pop this extra piece in. And when I'm adding pieces, I always want to make sure that uh, my mesh is, for the most part, completely lined up the way I feel like it needs to be. So I'm just basically going back and massaging that shape a little bit more. Yeah, you can kind of see I'm adding now more of that actual making his um his jaw structure stand out a bit more making it actually seem like it's popping out of the mesh and that there's some type of um indention there like something that's supposed to be there and then we're just cleaning up the jaw a little bit more As I said, once we get this popped in, then um, we shouldn't be doing too much uh, movement on the jaw. It should just be kind of detailing and sculpting on it. So, just making sure we get all those shapes correctly. And as you can see, um, with the refinement process, I usually do everything sloppy and then go back. As you see now, I'm refining the um, jaw and all of its structures. So it's all about time and you know just patience. And also you have to kind of believe because you have to be able, like I said, see the end um, product before it's uh, completed. Because yes, it is sloppy, but as you've seen in the um, the the beginning stages, uh, the the very first part of the tour, you the the clean mesh. It's very it's kind of it's definitely worth it so we just keep pushing I'm just still cleaning up this this jaw structure and right now what I'm doing is I noticed that it was so I need to be a little higher as well so I just kind of move that into place and back to the face to edit some of those um, some of those gaps between the, the nose and the, um, the eye mask and right there what I was trying to figure out is basically these like um, I'm trying to figure out how Trying to figure out how the uh, how the jaw structure folded over. Couldn't really understand how thick it was supposed to be. I was trying to figure that out. So right here, I'm just playing with that, trying to figure that out. Just continuing to massage the shape all around, jump around all pieces. I'm starting to get the feel of the actual mech helmet now kind of see it you can definitely see it a lot more now with um, a lot of those main shapes in there going back in there and sketching out some of these creases and we'll get more bend in the nose uh, here we go working on that little jaw piece over here 
like I said, what you want to kind of do, what I usually do is I just sculpt that, go in there and rough out everything that is going to just um, be my placeholders for when I go in my life. And so just rough everything out. And yeah, it's just a lot of back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. But it's really good to have reference. Um, as I said, without uh, without reference, it'll just be me pushing and pulling, um, kind of watching the shape until I, you know, finally get a good feel for it. But with reference, it's just it, it's so much easier because I actually have something to go off of now. Nice All right, guys. So at this point, I'm about done with the concepting of the helmet. Um, I will be back tomorrow with the Rita apology and uh, cleaning of the helmet. So stay tuned. Definitely come back tomorrow, and we'll start the second video, which is the cleaning process of the helmet. And yeah, see you guys then.